Welcome to Ear Biscuits. I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. Joining us today at the, I don't even want to, I don't want to say joining us today at the round table of dimmed lighting anymore because. Oh, you said dimmed? Isn't that what it is? We talked about this before. I'm sorry. Look, all I want, I don't want to say either one of those things. It's dim lighting. I don't want to say dimmed lighting because that's wrong. I'm just, oh, I'm, you're, I'm, you're admit admitting to, it? I'm admitting that right up top wow, because we, that never happens. we've got too much good stuff written on the sheet of paper that we just jotted down that we want to talk about to get sidetracked about stupid stuff that would, we could normally riff on, okay? So I'm just gonna say I was wrong. I'm also gonna say, uh, not. I'm not gonna say, joining us today at the round table of dim lighting because we're here. We're joining each other. Now, we, now you've said it. And we don't need to unexplain that. You've explained each other. it. We're here, we're you, doing this. You've explained it multiple times now. I'm very happy to be here with you by mm. my side, Rhett. Oh, really? <laughs> Likewise, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's touch and go these days, uh, as will become clear with your- <laughs> Yeah, it is. With your, with your vocal box. Let's, yeah. let's, let's see about that. But Lots before, to catch up before on. Before we get into the details of not only uh, my medical situation, which is, you know, our medical situations have become sort of a theme of our lives, something about almost turning 40, but we'll talk about that. Uh, we're or gonna not. talk about what we did today, which was very exciting and, and uh, what know, we, amusing. Um, yeah. And then we're gonna talk about a recent trip to the New York City. We gotta catch you up on all of this stuff and it's, and, and it's gonna be a roller coaster ride of uh, retro enactment. We're gonna reenact Spoiler some stuff. Spoiler alert, um, teaser. But first we do wanna let you know, uh, very important, those of you who live in New York City, or Los Angeles. I, uh, I live in Los Angeles. We have added two shows, one in New York, one in LA, to the Tour of Mythicality matinee shows on the same days that we already have New York and LA shows. Because they were sold out, but now if you wanna see us in one of these two places, yes. tourofmythicality.com, they go and sell Friday the 11th of August. But if you are a subscriber to the Mythical Monthly newsletter, which you can do at mythicalmonthly.com, you will get very soon probably by the time you listen to this, you'll already have it, a special code, an early access code so you can purchase uh, the tickets early. So That's one of the many things you get when you are a Mythical Beastly subscriber to the Mythical Monthly newsletter yes. is perks of the firstness. Yeah, so new shows, New York, LA, they're gonna sell quickly if the first shows were any indication, so go over to Mythical uh, Monthly to sign up for the newsletter, Go to tourmythicality.com to uh, get ticks. Get the ticks. Don't get ticks. Nobody wants ticks. No, ticks or lice, carries, for that matter. Carry lots of disease. They keep finding new ticks with new diseases. Man. Very disheartening. Really, it really is. Good on ticks, though, you know? Good Way for to, them. Good for them. I don't believe in, I don't, I mean, my moral obligation is to humans first. Well, I didn't say that out of a moral obligation. I just, I said it because you know what? They're doing their thing, man. They're just doing what they, they need to do to survive. You gotta recognize that they're working hard at their thing and it's working. But do they really need to spread disease to live in a, to live a fulfilled life? Uh, apparently so. I don't know, I think there's some sort of nature mess up as, happening. As long as they don't hurt anybody, I'm fine with it. They hurt a lot of people. Good point. I'm not fine with it. Yeah, we should be anti-ticks. I hate, I hate ticks. <clears throat> I know you gotta be very careful what you're for and against. Right, I'm nervous the, right days. now. I'm nervous now that we're taking a stance Any, about ticks. If anytime you take a, in 2017 oh, when you take a stand about anything, you offend somebody, we have offended all tick lovers. It's gonna bite you in the butt. Yeah. And incidentally, I've had members of my family who've been tick bitten on the butt. Oh man, growing up, I, I One would guy find, died. What? The, the well, tick that was, or the person? It was a spider. But he did die. You had he a relative uncle. die. He got bit by a spider. Yeah, it was in. Yeah, he sat. He sat down on the on the outhouse toilet, and a uh, a spider bit him on the butt, and he died from it. A tick was not involved. Why are we discussing it? Are you sure that he died from the spider bite, or just complications that are that arose? That well, he didn't die it. immediately. He didn't like. Yeah, he died from complications of whatever a spider bite gives you, man. What year was this? Don't fact check me. He was in an outhouse. So it was a long time ago, before yeah. your time. It's just like a, it's it's a, a story that it lives in your family. My nanny's side of the family, Lucille. Because one day when I was a kid, I was like, tell me about the last words of my relatives. What? 
I just I remember sparking conversation with my nanny, and I said, "Tell me about the last words of my relatives." Very morbid thought from a child. And um, she said, "Well, you had one so and so member of our family who uh, bit by a spider on the butt in the outhouse, and he died." <laughs> I was like, "What did he say?" He's like, "If you gotta go, you gotta go." Get it? Did he really say that? Or was no. that, that was a joke that Nanny made. It was a joke that I just made up. I don't remember what she told oh, me. Oh, you just made that up on the yeah, spot, right? Yeah, I was now? pretty proud of myself. But then you didn't laugh. Well, I was really. I was thinking like, why aren't did, you laughing? Did, did Nanny? I, well, Are you holding back for some reason? Yeah, I won't be laughing. Well, a lot. Let's get to that because I want the people to know why you didn't laugh at my amazing joke. When you got to go, you got to go. Um, Double meaning. I'm not laughing because I'm reserving my voice. <laughs> you can probably tell. You can probably tell I sound, I, I sound a little bit different. There's not as much resonance in my voice as, you sound as, sad. as normal. You actually sound sad. I want the people to know that you're not sad. Um, I'm not sad. I'm, <laughs> I, I am concerned, <laughs> which we will talk about. I don't want you. I, <laughs> he is sad. I don't want you to be overly concerned. But I, if you remember from last week when we were talking to Steve Pink, uh, friend and collaborator, director on Buddy System Season 2, uh-huh. uh, I had to, to step out. I had to abruptly end the podcast because I needed to get to my ENT appointment. Ear, nose, and throat it. So I don't know how much of this I explained before, but it, the long story short is, you know, for like the past, like the last month of Buddy System, I kind of had a on again, off again cold, like sore throat that I just kind of chalked up to st- stressed out, working too much, not sleeping enough. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, I've got some cold, I can't shake it because I'm not getting you know, rest and, and whatever. Um, and also. You, your your immune system is weak because you're you're working. Right, but also in the. Trying mid- to keep up with me. Like three and a half weeks or so into this uh, sort of mild sore throat, you know, we in, in the, the last week of shooting. Uh, well, first of all, there's a lot of yelling. I did think about the fact that there was a lot of yelling this season. There was like, oh, stick your feet in this bucket and, and yell. yell. Uh, Open this door. door. Look at this little girl and, and yell. yell. Yeah, <laughs> in unison. I'm gonna tell you right now, no more yelling in Buddy System. You're gonna it do all a, happened. You're gonna do like a find and replace on every script, script rewrite for the word yell. You're gonna replace the word yell with whisper gently. I actually thought about this. Whisper gently and look sad. From now on when we have to yell in a narrative project, we're gonna have to get Designated ADR. It's going to be somebody else who designated sounds like me. pinch yellow. And all I'm gonna do is just open my mouth. <laughs> Well, it's funny because we had that scene where we opened the door and we're supposed to yell at this girl um, and we rehearsed it and we told her because she's pretty young, we didn't wanna frighten her. We were like, we're gonna yell in your face really loud. But then when we rehearsed it, we were like, but first we're going to just act like we're yelling but no sound is gonna come out of our throats. We actually told her that. Wish I had stayed there. You wish you should have stayed there. Yeah. Because I, I was yelling enough for the both of us. And and coincidentally, I'm still fine, I'm great. Yeah, and I think it, based on some <laughs> limited reading that I've done. Limited, huh? Um, I, again, I, so I went to the doctor. What I thought had happened is, okay, I kinda kicked myself when I was down. Like you got compromised, you know, drainage and stuff happened in your throat, and then you strain your voice by yelling, and I kinda like sent myself into a little bit of a tailspin and I haven't been able to really rest my voice. And then today we were out with the team, we'll talk about that, and I was t- it was outside, there's a lot of people, so I'm talking, so now you can kind of hear that I'm hoarse, and this is what's been, been happening every day. I've been mm-hmm. waking up and feeling fine, uh, like a mild sore throat, and then by the end of the day I feel like my voice is kind of strained. So um, I went to the doctor and uh, I went to the doctor right after last week, after the podcast, right before we left for New York, because I was like, if I'm gonna have to be on some kind of like vocal rest or something like that, if there's a, if there's like a, n- a node or something on my vocal cords, if I've strained them, I need to know what to do so I don't make the problem worse. But And you want things to get better. If things can get better quickly by going to the doctor before we go on Fallon and uh, Ryan and Kelly, You'd like to actually be able to talk when we go on these shows, right? And you I did, went to the doctor. And did what talk. did he? What happened? Well, it was a very it was an odd doctor's appointment. I've told you this, but I will tell you this now. Um, 
But I wasn't listening, so I tell me okay, again. Okay, yeah, just too. listen this time then. So I, I, I had to go uh, about an hour away from, from here in order to get an appointment because it was so last minute. Which I will point out that if I did listen, I could tell the story and then you could save your voice. Mm, too late for that. Mm. And uh, so I had to drive an hour, I, I go to this doctor and I, I kind of noticed that the girl behind the counter who was kind of checking me in but also another girl, we were acting a little strange when I checked in. And, and, and Like a cult? No, like, and this is, it sounds pretentious and because and this has happened a few times now. Now that it is not uncommon for us, for one of us to be recognized when we're in public because of people seeing the show. Our unending fame. Sometimes someone looks at you funny or says something in a weird way and just because we are selfish, uh, self-absorbed people, we tend to think, oh, she must know who I am. And then there are some times where it turns out that is true and other well, times uh, it's like, oh no, she doesn't have any idea who I am. That was a very weird. self-centered thing to think because I'm an egomaniac, you know, just like everybody is. Well, I'm not. I think that when, when it happens, it happens enough that it turns out that people uh, have recognized me. I know what that look looks like and I recognize it. But sometimes you're mistaken. Sometimes you're mistaken. Yes, but I don't think that makes me an ego Maniac. Well, we're, I'm, I'm just saying we're all egomaniacs. We're all I know. Very I'm, self-focused. I'm just trying to get out of the bucket with you. Um, so, but, but they didn't but yeah, say you're, anything. You're, you're hedging, but they you didn't felt the say same. Anything. You felt the same way about this um, receptionist. Yeah, but it was weird because they weren't really they weren't really looking me in the eye, and it, it was just a little strange. I was like, ah, what's going on? And then a, another woman. But you thought maybe she recognizes me. That right, right, right. But that. I didn't say anything. Then another woman comes out and she's like an older woman who is like in a pants suit. Great. She looks like some kind of like, she's like the office manager or something like that. She's not one of the nurses, she's not in scrubs. She says. And that's why you said pants suit. You're not, you didn't say something, you weren't being sexist. No, cause she had on a pants suit. Instead of scrubs. Yeah, and uh, she and she's like, Rhett? And I had just gotten my paperwork, I was, hadn't even gone through it. Rhett, please come on back. And so I go back there and, she, and she's like, well, the girls in the back are really excited. And so I'm like, oh, okay, they do know who I am. And now I'm a little, feel a little awkward, right? Because what, what am I supposed to say? I, and I said something like, great. <laughs> <laughs> so for a second you weren't an egomaniac, but yeah. then you said great and you became one again? Yeah, I mean, well, I'm just, I'm just trying to play it down because I, I'm not looking. It for, is awkward. Yeah, I'm not yeah. looking for special treatment. You know, I just, I want, I want normal you just treatment, want medical treatment. Yeah, right. And so but then the I, girls in the back were pretty what? Pretty it, excited. Pretty, that's what I she said. I don't know said. what they thought I was going to do for them. She's making it weird. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just there to have my throat looked at. <laughs> so I go and sit down in a, in a yeah. Ex- what do you say? Exam room. I said great. You said so great. I sit down in the exam room, <laughs> and then she's like one of our nurses or you know what who's who who comes in before the doctor is that a nurse it's a mystery to me so about 10 minutes later knock on the door i'm done with my paperwork a g- girl young girl 25 years old um uh, comes in and uh she she looks at me and she's got this kind of smile on her face and her face is getting a little bit red a little bit red and she she just like smiled at me and i kind of smiled back to her and then she sits down at the computer where she's gonna like take her notes for my like pre-interview before the doctor comes in. And she's like, I'm so nervous. And she gets up and walks out. That's all she said and she walked out? All she out? said. She said, oh, I'm man. so nervous. And then she walked out and I was like, well, golly, I'm sitting here thinking, <laughs> I you, just, you know me and we'll talk about this. I'm I'm a hypochondriac, I've talked about it before, but. Y- yeah, you're I've pretty been th- concerned I, going in here. I, you know, I, I go through, okay, I've got throat cancer, I've got, Thyroid, can, you know, it's all. I got. I think I've got everything, and I've mm-hmm. got some kind of throat thing, and I'm going to have to be have be on vocal rest for weeks, and it's going to change our fall. And I'm You're worried. very worried, if not in, uh, concerned. Yeah, and so she's not helping by saying I'm nervous and just walking out, giggling, and so I, then I wait like 15 minutes. Oh, and then she comes back in with the doctor. So she couldn't even come in by herself. So she's got to come back in with the doctor. She's still got the same smile on her face. And um, well, it, it, it's flattering, but it's just not—it's not a good time. But at this point, something interesting happened because I could tell that the doctor, as is not unusual, has no idea who I am, but knows that his girls know who I am and are excited about me being there. 
And so I, there, was a, it was, there was an interesting dynamic there. Uh-huh. Because. Um, you could tell when I could he walked. sense it. Did he walk in with a he kinda had, swagger? He kinda had a little bit of like, who's this big shot? I'm the kind big of shot. attitude. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, and then I, uh, so he, he says. You got this vibe from him. Yeah, I did, because then I, because I, he's like, okay, what's going on? And I said, well, you know, I, I've been, I've been working a lot this summer, uh, been on doing 12 hour days on set, you know, and he was like, 12 hour days, welcome to the club. <laughs> oh, he's, he's. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's uh, asserting his power. Yeah, and, and of course I'm just sitting he's there. He's marking his territory or yeah, something. Yeah, 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 he didn't pee all, all over it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he might for a second. But he did not urinate on me or her or any or any <laughs> instruments. <laughs> Which is it, it, it they do teach that in medical school. Yeah, if things you get either, desperate, either, you got to break it out, you got to whip it out and no, pee no, on no. stuff. No, no, no. if you're you can either sterilize your instruments with an autoclave or you can urinate upon them. Yeah, that's right. Oh my goodness. So he mm. was he was basically <clears throat> you just saw the psychology written all over his face because especially when he says that Right, like, but well, I could I could have been reading some things into it. He's like it. putting you in your place. But he, but he was very professional, very nice guy. Um, but then the it, it got a little bit embarrassing from that point because oh good. I first of all I was thrown off my game with the, the dynamics of what was happening. <laughs> but what I wanted was I wanted that throat scope thing that you had done when we went to the plastic surgeon's office. Um, not not that we're getting plastic surgery. We made a commercial for a plastic <laughs> surgeon in Newport Beach years ago. And and just to get the lay of the land, uh, you got your throat. We scoped. found out that he had a scope they could send down and and get video footage of your vocal cords right. while you talked. And not knowing what that entailed, I was like, "Let's do it." And he was like, uh, <laughs> "And I was like, no, let's do it." Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then he he numbed my throat mm. and shoved the camera all the way down in there, and it's in that. The making, making of. of a plastic surgeon. Well, commercial, that's what which I is still on our channel. That's what I wanted done. If you want to see my vocal cords move, and you wanted this. Yeah, but what he did, he was like, "Okay, open your mouth." Say because uh, you were convinced that you had a node or a, something nasty the, on your on your vocal cords. This is I've never had this particular situation, and so and something you want seems confirmation. Different. You want confirmation that yeah, you don't have the worst case scenario in that moment. So what he does is he looks at the back of my throat and uh, he's like. Mm. Yeah, you got a lot, you got inflammation, drainage. You got inflammation from drainage, and then welcome to the club. <laughs> then he takes his uh, his little mirror, you know, like a dentist mirror, like you can stick in and see different parts of the mouth. He's like, say ah, and then he sticks that mirror back into the back of my throat so he can see down my throat. So not using the scope, but using the mirror. And I have a crazy gag reflex. So like he gets he gets it close to the back, and I start going. <laughs> And it's embarrassing because I've got this you know, fan in the oh, in the room. You got a fan. The fan club. You know, the rest I'm, of the fan club is is I'm gathered choking, outside of the door. I'm choking like an idiot. <laughs> and then I'm like, sorry, I got a bad gag reflex. He's like, okay, uh, just breathe like this. He's like, <laughs> he's got me breathing like a pregnant woman. And then he goes it's back another, in. Another power play, by the way. And this has no medical. Right. He's just doing this for fun. But <laughs> he got a couple of seconds before I. <laughs> Choked him right out of my mouth again, <laughs> and uh, he was like, "Yep, uh, just it's, it's inflamed." And uh, here's what we're gonna do: I'm gonna prescribe four medications. Oh wow! It's like I'm gonna give you an antibiotic. I'm gonna give you uh, an oral steroid. I'm gonna give you a nasal steroid, and I'm gonna give you uh, like Mucinex, basically. Like, a... so. But you were thinking, I want the scope. I want definitive. I want. I want a. I want a diagnosis. Or a clean prognosis. Yeah, I want something definitive. I don't want just like a little gag and mirror action. Well, because first and of then all, a lot of medication. I'm very much anti antibiotics. I don't like antibiotics unless I have an infection. So I delayed so you're probiotic. Yeah, and I yeah. So I delayed the start of the antibiotics until things didn't get better, and I was like, because he was like, because I could kind of feel like again, this could be where my hypochondriac comes in. But I can like feel like some chest tightness and like, oh, I kind of feel like maybe it's moving into my lungs. Like I start and I, and I don't know if that's in my head, if it's psychosomatic or if it's legitimate. Like, oh, I, I'm, this is going to turn into bronchitis. I should take the antibiotic. I never take antibiotics. It's okay to do it once. I'll do a probiotic at the same time I'm doing the antibiotic, which I have been doing. 
Are you saying this stuff out loud to Jesse? Because oh yeah, I talk to her about it all the time. Driving oh my nuts. goodness, um, that's horrible. And and then I also delayed the steroid because it's like makes you susceptible to infection. And but then uh, yesterday I started the steroid. Long story short, I've now basically done all four medications that he has pres- prescribed, and. Um, I feel exactly the same. Like, well, that's because all of them were just to express his dominance over <laughs> you to hit the rest of his well, staff. I, no, I don't want to. We're not going to get anybody in trouble. I think he 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 did what he usually does when he sees somebody who's in my condition. He and just most did of it with time, a little more swagger. It knocks it out. But unfortunately, I still have something going on with the throat. So I feel fine. I don't feel sick. Don't have like swollen lymph nodes or a headache or whatever. Basically, I wake up every morning and I feel fine. You're talking to yourself right now, by the way. And then I and then this I this is self talk to make himself feel better. Well, I don't. I don't feel good. Uh, and I'm then not saying it's working. As I talk throughout the day, and if it's a, t- a day like today where there's a lot of talking, by the end of the day, you can. I I feel like I sound a little bit hoarse. Just a little bit hoarse. I'm also talking a little softer because if I talk at a high level, it'll I, there's this like sh- kind of sharp pain that then makes it feel like my voice is about to crack. And um, so uh, you know what? Open. Let me let me uh, look. Just open, but breathe. Like breathe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know, have a like, mirror. Hold your hold your arms like a. I'm not going to do that. Like a like now a begging puppy em- dog. Now you're just trying to embarrass me. Okay. So, and of course, I get uh, Hadil, who our assistant. She's got to worry, you know. She's got to worry about all this medical stuff oh, too. Gosh, she's made it's, multiple it's horrible proctology appointments for us, and she's she calls the doctor, and then the doctor. I'm like, okay, well, he's got an office uh, over the hill, and he's got an office way up north, and it's like, well, he's got one type of scope at one place. So I'm basically, I need a follow up appointment because. We got a lot of things coming up, as you know. We got a pretty big fall. We got some things that were my, my, many involve you speaking. My voice is kind of an important part of this whole thing, and um, so I'm I'm also I'm thinking worst case scenario. I'm like, oh, I've got I've got a no, a nodule, I've got something as wrong. As long as we're clear that your looks have nothing to do with it, then I'm on board. Yeah, mm-hmm. my looks have nothing to do with what? Anything. It's just your voice. Then I'm cool with this. What about your looks? That's pretty important. Okay, it's all important. It's it all works together. I didn't. I didn't know that's how it worked. <laughs> I thought the older ladies like me and the younger ladies looked like you, and I thought that we were good. <laughs> that was my understanding. All you got to do is be able to talk, man. <laughs> so Just focus on. Don't lose that. Yeah. So I'm. I'm worried. I'm worried really? about. I'm worried about our plans, and so you know, you like start reading. It's like, well, you're gonna have this th- vocal fold thing that requires a month of vocal rest and maybe surgery and all this. I'm like, oh gosh, all this stuff we've got planned. And then stress, you know, I think a lot of this is stress induced. I'm making it worse. So anyway. I'm making it worse? I actually don't I'm know what to do. It worse. I don't know what to do to help you, so you I just make help, light of it. You can't help me. I mean, I'm going back to the doctor. Um, I'm going back to the doctor on Tuesday of next week and I'm going to the office where he's got the thing that is like the- A different doctor. No, no, same doctor. Oh, same doctor? The yeah. one that you've been talking trash about this whole time? You're going back to him? Yeah, I I, I, oh. I think he's a good doctor. What's his name? I'm not gonna say that. Oh, why not? And uh, cause he, need, he's, he's gonna him. use you the- You need his scope. He's gonna use the proper scope to get in there and get the, you hear that scope? You see that, that happened? That's what's happening. You're okay, man. And um, so I'm going to that appointment and then hopefully what he's gonna say is, oh, it's gonna go away on its own. And then worst case scenario is he's like, worst case scenario is like, you're gonna die. I don't think that's gonna happen. Uh, he probably wouldn't say You're gonna that. die and it's gonna start, it's starting in the throat. But really worst case scenario I think is like, okay, you need to let your voice rest for X amount of days in order for this condition to go away because you really haven't let it rest. And then the question is, well how long do you have to let it rest? And what does that do about when GMM comes back, et cetera, et cetera. Well, do, you know, that's what I, st- that's what I start thinking about. Just and, don't. Don't bring me into it. You're making me nervous now. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> You're making me nervous. Okay. Well, I don't want you to be nervous. I, everything's going to be okay. He's, I don't. He's going to be fine. I know I'm going to be fine. There's a direct correlation with ever, how much he reads and how bad he feels. I'm just going to put it that way. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I definitely make it worse. Let's, I, let's, I, I I I don't necessarily gonna think be that, great. I, that I manifest it, but 
I do believe that like with the back problems that I've had, I do believe that there's a big part of it that I've manifested the problems. So I do think that it's possible for me to manifest some sort of um, throat thing because my back's good now mm. and so then I'm like, oh I gotta find something else to well, go wrong. Let's hope that's right but I think something immediately that is gonna make you feel better is changing the subject to the wonderful experience we had today yes. and in New York City and also showing some love to our sponsors. Yes, let's do that now. Okay, you saw. Which is ourself. Yeah, you saw on Fallon, if you saw that segment, that we uh, we introduced the new logo for GMM uh, for when, this, when the show comes back. What that, that means, means is Link? that our, our, yeah, just rest your voice, man. Okay, yeah, yeah, why don't you do this whole thing, let's, I'll just hold things. Because this might be your life for a few months. Let's yeah. just practice it. Don't make me nervous. Um, it means that our old, I'm gonna call this the classic Good Mythical Morning logo which appears on beanies, t-shirts, and hoodies available at, are we calling it retlink.com slash store? I don't even know what we're calling our store anymore. The beauty is that we're calling all types of things. Uh, we're, we're, we're working on the store, adding so many things figuring out what we're gonna call it. That is currently the address, but I do Red think. com slash store. That address will always work, it but I do think work. that we will I'm come up it. with a catchier name at some point. You can get the classic Good Mythical Morning logo collector's item, guys, while they last there at our store. Did you say 40% off? I didn't even say 40% off because I thought there was enough value in the scarcity, but now, according, uh, because Rhett had to chime in. Yeah, so, the, you know, so I'm sorry. A, you're gonna have to get uh, to stop, a place stop, stop. you can cover it. all the details this, without me. I got it, okay. I got this, all right. 40% off. I was gonna say that. 40% off until what? It's gone. And then what happens after it's gone? Too bad. It's gone forever. I said that earlier. Okay, good, I wasn't listening. Because um, I was concentrating on holding things. Yeah, just. Just breathe through your vocal cords without, <laughs> without actually making noise. Don't speak for the rest of this podcast. Um, I don't know if you can tell by the like shimmer? Res residual shimmer on our faces that we spent the day at an amusement park oh, yeah, or yeah. by just the natural glow of amusement which is coming from our face if you're, if you're watching this or even if you're just listening to it. Can you can you hear residual sound waves of amusement from spending a day at the amusement park? They probably can't, but especially because we may not be exuding those. I think let, let's let's analyze. Well, it's a, I mean, it was a hundred degrees out there. We went to Six, Six flags, flags over Georgia. Over Georgia. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. Well, I think there is one in Georgia. There Six is. Six flags. We went to Six Flags in Magic Santa, Mountain in Magic Santa Mountain. Clarita, where it's approximately. 10 degrees warmer than it is here, so it was 101 degrees. We took the whole team, which now requires a full-size bus. Did we, you see that bus we were in? Did yeah. you look, check that bus out? Yeah, my eyes were open when I got in the bus. I saw it. I like, I got gracious. in it. I, I, I actually said out was, loud, this is what this has become. Mythical entertainment requires yeah. a big old bus. That's something to be proud of. Yeah, and then, uh, you started to feel a little egomaniacal. Yeah, thing. right. Then I was like, oh, like that doctor's office thing. Yeah, I think yeah. I think that's your real problem. You need to be seeing a different kind of doctor. I'm still reading that book. Ego is the enemy. I need to read it more. I guess. <laughs> uh, so we get there uh, with the team in tow because um, we came back. We didn't have we, not as many people came back. I don't know if heat strokes happened or some people drove in cars. Did we leave some people? I think. Uh, Eddie was wearing jeans. Yeah, that was. I a think mistake. he and Ben they went back a different way. Yeah. Um. I was thinking I knew it was going to be hot out there because I've been to Santa Clarita before, and it was literally 110 degrees. I'm like, man, we're going there. And I I looked on that. Is it going to be crowded? Is it packed? But it wasn't 100. It wasn't 110 today. And it, and, it was and it was 100. 101. 100. And so like I started thinking, what am I going to wear? Am I I got to wear shorts? Oh my gosh! And I gotta wear, sh I got I gotta wear the right kind of shoes. Uh -huh. and I gotta wear, I gotta pack a pack. I noticed that you asked me about my pack. I was, I was like, like, well, I put a lot of thought in my pack. But what was in it? Uh, a big water bottle with ice and water, and a and it had like a a straw. It was one of the, it was the biggest one we got. I was like, I might bring a second. I didn't, but I was like, I gotta stay hydrated. You know me, I know you know I gotta stay hydrated. 
Got to keep that voice going. <laughs> but they had wa- I mean, they had water at the park also. I mean, well, you either have to purchase it or you get it from water fountains. Which I knew I would still have to go to the water fountain, but I would fill up a container because you. Here's what happens: you get it, the whole thing is a survival situation. It's 100 degrees out there. It felt post-apocalyptic, man. It's like there weren't that many people, and it was just like reptilian roller coasters everywhere, and people serving. Uh, hot dogs and then just lifeless people crawling from thing to thing. It wasn't it's, that bad. It's like a deserted wasteland of amusement and you get yourself in a line, <laughs> brother, don't get thirsty in a line because th- no one's gonna turn around and, oh, here, sir, have a hydrating beverage. No, you're on your own until you get off of this ride, which But there all are it does, many, many places to, buy, to get waters. Not, not when you're in a line, man. You could be in a line for for hours. But but I got a bottle of water and there's also pain reliever in my pack. Okay. But okay. When I when I'm still dehydrated for some reason and I, I get a headache. Uh there's uh lip balm, which of course uh <laughs> gotta have that. I not only manufacture but I keep on my person at all times. Uh to keep the lips hydrated. That's mm. an important part. Yeah. Um, I think uh, personally, I believe you be, you've become dependent on it, but I don't I mind had, because we sell it. I had sunglasses. <laughs> I had I wore contacts because if I take my, I don't want to have to switch between glasses and sunglasses when I go from like an indoor line to an outdoor roller coaster. So I'm wearing I wore contacts and then I wore. You um, need to get transition lenses, man. Sunglasses. <laughs> uh, I think there's safety concerns with those because in the moment of transition, which turns out to be a couple of minutes. I think. No, I think I think it's like thirty seconds. Even seconds. Thirty seconds. You can run into a lot of wall in thirty seconds. But you look so trying cool. to crawl out of. You a, look so cool for thirty seconds when you walk in. It's like that dude wears his sunglasses inside. You're like, no, no, wait, 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 no. Well, no, he walk, transition lenses. You walk into a freaking like dark place, and you have to freeze there until it transitions. Yeah. So it's like you walk in and stand. And collect yourself. Collect yourself. I think it's great. People are piling up behind you trying to get into the establishment and you're just trying to see. Let me tell you right now. And then you walk back outside. I need glasses, they will be transition lenses. (laughs) Because I've thought about this quite a bit. Oh, you think you've thought about this more than me? I had had contact lenses, I had sunglasses, I had another pair of sunglasses that were also not prescription in case the first sunglasses I was wearing proved to be uncomfortable halfway through the day. I had my what, prescription what, how, sunglasses. How could they prove to be uncomfortable? Because sometimes the way they sit on my face, it hurts certain places where they sit <laughs> if I don't wear them every day. These glasses, which I don't wear that often, are very comfortable. These are my night glasses. I wear these when I go home because if I wear my day glasses, which are the glasses that I'm known for, at night, by the time I get home, they start to push in certain places that I need new glasses that push in different places. Hmm. So when I get home, I put on my night glasses, which I'm wearing right now because it's night, and I packed these to go with me today in case I needed to abandon the contact lenses because they would be uncomfortable. So I packed these glasses, and then I also packed my prescription sunglasses. So in my pack, I okay, had, uh, now I see why you needed a pack. I, don't, I had I don't two have... pairs of non-prescription <laughs> sunglasses. I didn't realize how crazy this was. I didn't add it up. A third pair of prescription sunglasses a pair of prescription glasses. And then you and Stevie at one point put your glasses in my pack and you, do you, when you were asking me, can I put my glasses in your pack before we go on this roller coaster? You notice I got kind of stressed. Yeah, it was very well, weird. Well, because that would be six pairs of glasses in my pack and I didn't know if my pack could take it. I didn't know what would happen to all those glasses. Now that I see the level of, I, I, I'm very familiar with I also your, thought about bringing a hoodie. Well, you're, that would have been a, inappropriate. I literally, thought for a second. It might get cold, it might it, get chilly. If in we the stay shade, late. even if it's 100 degrees, sometimes in the shade, it can get kind of chilly. Now, I didn't. I, we have a, I've known this about you for a long time, we've talked about it. You have a different sensitivity level to these things. Um, lots of differences between me and you. One of the differences. I didn't pack a pack for you. Is Right, I, I took it, I, you know, I think, I'm thankful that you brought a pack. I used your pack. You did, I was like your dad. I put, well, I used your pack for one ride I put my hat, even though I specifically said, you know what, I can just leave my hat out <laughs> on the shelf. Didn't. And then Stevie but was you... like, your hat may get stolen. I was <laughs> so like, okay, put I'll put it in Link's pack. Along with Stevie's cowboy hat. Yeah, right, she had her big Stetson in there. <laughs> I don't know how she crammed it in there. It was got, like, it got, bent, it got bent a little bit because when I, I took it out and gave it to her, it was a little bent. But 
Um, I just don't have the, I don't have those sensitivities, so I don't need the pack. I felt like I was entering a survival situation, and I was, and I made it because of the pack. I'm just you a, made it because of my. But pack. I'm just a little bit. Where would you have worried gone? for you when you are in an actual post-apocalyptic survival situation? Because you were at Six Flags, not over Georgia, but <laughs> Santa Clarita. It was actually, I mean, all my needs were met. I appreciate you meeting the need of uh, of putting my hat in your in your bag. But the but moment I was very hydrated because what I would do is when I saw a place that was selling water, which now okay, you saved you money. Bought, you bought water. You saved money. You supported an industry of bottled water, which is that's negligent. But I just got part. a big thing of water and I <laughs> drank the whole thing. I was fully hydrated. I peed multiple times today. I sweated a lot. Uh, you know, mark my territory around Six Flags Over Georgia. <laughs> I literally peed twice all day and I drank constantly. I peed three times. I don't know how I did it. You sweated it out. But I did know, Tis, that at the beginning, <laughs> I didn't know. You didn't notice. I did notice when we were getting on that bus bef before we left the studio that you said, you turned to me, saw my pack and you said, you have a pack. I was interested in what you might have in there. And then I said, other people have packs and then you dropped it, which is good. We learned not to push each other's buttons when we're having a fun day. So well, you, you're to be commended for for stepping back from the button. But I'm just I was in genuinely interested. You have a pack. I'm like, well, what's in the pack? I can see it in your eyes. It I mean, judgment. I did, yeah, but that doesn't matter. I could be I could be judging the fact that you have a pack, but I'm at, I'm also just asking what's in your pack. And so you can choose to be defensive, or you can just choose to be like, well, I've got seven pairs of glasses. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just four, was. Four but levels it, but, of pH of different waters for, for, for you, different points of the day. Put, almost put, put a hoodie in there, but now there's a windbreaker. I, f I feel like I f the, re the main reason Lip we bomb. do, the main reason we do Ear Biscuits, I think has become very clear right now. This is a safe place for, have it, for having a discussion that if we, if we had the exact same starting point that of this discussion, on that bus at that moment, it would have ended in a fight. Not in entertainment, but it wouldn't. It I, would have. No, no. But if I'm it, not saying it'd be well, your, it may be my fault. It, I would have never meant for it to be a fight. I just wanted it to be a conversation. No, you didn't. You judged me for having a pack, and I would have been defensive. And if you judge me for having something, I would be like, I'd, I'd give you the, I'd, I'd spout the reason off. I, yeah, you would spout it. You I'd would spout, give me. I'd spout the reason off. You did spout it. And I'm just saying, if I, if you feel like I'm aggressive, if, I, if, I, if you feel like I'm judging you by asking you a question. Just spout the reason off, and I'd be like, "Okay, cool. Seven pairs of glasses. I get it." <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but here, in the you know, in the auspices of of uh, the dim lighting, we can safely have an entertaining conversation. But you yourself and that's why just it keeps admitted our friendship that. Afloat. But just yeah. you yourself just that's admitted why you're talking. That as no, you shouldn't. As you describe your own it's freaking situation, ridiculous. you recognize the ridiculous nature of it. Just I mean, like you recognize the It doesn't the bother me though. There's I took nothing advantage wrong of with your throat. It, I took advantage of the fact that you had a, a, a backpack, which is Nothing which is wrong with your throat. Well, that's just false. <laughs> okay, I know, I know it's false. I was pushing a button, but I'm saying you knew that you were being ridiculous about having hypochondria, having extreme thoughts, jumping to extreme conclusions about what you might have. You, yeah, in this environment, you were saying, you know what? It's entertaining because it's, it's a bit ridiculous. Yeah. And I'm doing the same. We can do that here. That's, that's the beauty of this It's table. a safe space. This is a safe space for us to be ourselves and not take ourselves too seriously. But, but in the front of that bus, we could have had one of those things where the driver had to back away slowly. And but, I mean without the bus. But that would have been ridiculous. It would have you been. You do recognize that would have been ridiculous. But your fault? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, yes. It uh, would have yes. been ridiculous. I'm making fun of us if we, that the fight we didn't have. I'm making fun of that fight we didn't even have. Well, let's talk about the fun that we did have at the amusement park because. Did we? We split uh, up. Did you have fun? Because like, I know you're so tall and. Well, I was telling, I was regaling. Gangly. Regaling some stories uh, of my past and the way that I think about roller coasters. And uh, one of the things, the main thing that I'm thinking about when I get on a roller coaster is am I going to fit on this roller coaster? It, <laughs> like, because there's, there's, a, there's like seven different points of contact that could ruin a roller coaster ride for me. The main two being, I don't have enough leg room, so my. Well now the throat is one. 
Well, yeah, well, I'll, tell, I'll, I'll explain that in a second, but. <laughs> oh. I was just joking. No, but You're it gonna is, explain. seriously. Oh, yeah, okay. it, that, well, I, I, that was an, an additional thing I was oh, thinking about oh, today. Oh, go but ahead I'm like, then. Are my legs going to be jammed into the, the car in front of me in a way that makes it uncomfortable and like makes me think that my femur is going to snap when yeah. the G-forces get applied? Ooh. Um, and then the second thing is, if it's a roller coaster that has a shoulder restraint, they build the shoulder restraints for normal sized people within a certain range, and I'm outside of the normal range. And so, typically, a shoulder restraint goes. You have no business getting on a roller coaster. A shoulder restraint goes down and then like is parallel to your the front side of your body. But well, for it's me, like, it's like wearing a it's like wearing a onesie. It's the same reason you can't wear a onesie. But, my, but the shoulder restraints come over me, and then they're at like a forty five because they don't completely. So I don't feel safe in my. And then if I go too far, like if I pull down too far and it locks it, into it, place, it crunches. You. Now I'm cr I'm hunched, and now I'm beginning to think about my back because <laughs> while my back is doing good right now, historically I've got all these disc issues with my back, you know, uh, and so now I'm thinking. Oh, now I'm in a compromised situation and I can't get my neck back and I'm gonna be thinking, basically I'm just thinking, I'm not having any fun. Yet you ran headlong into it. Right, because I, you know. For the team. What, what I thought about it today the is, I enjoy doing things with people like that. Like, I would never just be like, one of those guys that like, amusement park is open, I'm by myself. I can ride any roller coaster. I would just go to the restaurants and eat. <laughs> <laughs> Go see the shows. That's what the I did. Show. I saw a great show you today. Saw a uh, it's a great show. Oh gosh! You guys were there. That was a great show today. You drug Cody and Jacob to a show at Six Flags, a place known for nothing but roller coasters. Uh huh. Quirk, Quirk the show in the Gearworks Theater. You should check it out. I don't want to hear about it. So acrobatic <laughs> trampolines. There's a girl on roller skates. Was Man, it air conditioned? Very air conditioned. Shoot. That was the main reason I was Should've there. Should have been there. But, I would have just stared at the the vent. But I'm not. But I just don't. The 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 being in fear in that moment. It's like I, I used to enjoy roller coasters when I was smaller because there was this like, oh, there's no chance that anything's going to go wrong, and I'm comfortable, and I'm just living on. I'm get, I'm living on the edge, but I'm totally safe. There's like, it's kind of like watching a horror movie. Like you're really scared, and you're with friends, but then, you know, you're safe. The same sensation. That's why I loved it. But then I just got so big. And then I started having these physical problems with my back and stuff. And now I just go, I'm just I'm just there for the other people. But today, the third thing that I've never thought about was I can't yell because of my voice. Oh. So I literally just like just held my mouth open in a screaming posture without making any noise the whole time. Is that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was that as good? It wasn't as good. I like it, I like to you scream. You got it. You got to scream. I'd much rather prefer to scream. Um on the way there Lizzie leaned over in the bus and showed me a video on her freaking phone of this recent mishap at the, I guess it, I don't know if it was the one at the Ohio State Fair, but yeah, the fireball. Like the fireball and then a whole section of, I don't know why I watched it. A per it's person like, died. I think I told her show it to me, but I don't know why the words came out of my mouth because I never would have wanted to see it. And then it was an iPhone video of, of the thing flailing about and then sending a whole section of it as a projectile and somebody died. That was a state fair though. That's not state six fair. flags. That, that they kinda... set it up, they take it down, That's they good. move on, they don't get dental work. Right, yeah. That's what happens. It's a carny joke. Um, I'd yeah. laugh if I could laugh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's ADR it. You okay. Open your mouth more so we can aid, <laughs> and cross your eyes a little bit. Okay. Uh, why did you cross your eyes a little bit? Because that's uh, you don't, don't do no, that. That makes it, that makes it. That makes it. I always cross my eyes when I laugh. It's unconvincing. I always cross my eyes when I laugh. It's not. I'm not convinced by it. <laughs> don't do it. But but do the other part. But did you have fun? An ADR of that. But you were, ADR of that. You were concerned, but but you forgot about that when you got I, to the park. I'm a compartmental. I'm a compartmentalist. Like mentalist, like someone who can control their brain. Yeah, right. And I, I can compartmentalize. Mm -hmm. You see what I did there? Yeah. I combined two things into one. And I, did that make sense? Maybe, I'm a compartmentalist. Maybe in your own brain. I can. I have a. That's my superpower. I can forget all. Well, types the word of on the street was specifically what was so said about, about you. It. Uh, we were like, where, 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 where's Lincoln Ben? And then somebody was like, Lincoln Ben are going hard. That was that oh, was, really. That was, the, 
That was the specific terminology well, used for you guys. Eddie was the Eddie seemed to know everything about the place, and right when we got there, he was like, "We should go to the the Twister Colossal, or what's it called? You Colossal know, something? Colossal Twister." So I was like, "Oh, you're the guy I'm going to follow. You're the leader now." Which is the, incidentally the roller coaster featured in uh, National Lampoon Vacation. The original. The, when they but go, this is the updated version. When they go to Wally World. Feldman told me this too, yeah. Hold on, the, no, the new version? No, the old version. The but old version with it. Chevy Chase. It's, it's more intense. No, I'm saying the new ver the roller coaster has been updated. But Wally World is Six Flags. So be it. When they pull up to Wally World in the movie, it's the th place we went today. Cool. You've never seen the movie, have you? No. Huh. Well. 98% of you who have seen the movie recognize that's pretty cool. I, I, I know they only made it to the parking lot and then it was closed, nope. spoiler alert. No, they get in and he we, oh. he, we uses a pistol to force his way onto all the rides. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a funny movie. Yeah, it's very funny. I should see it. Yeah. So I was following Eddie, Ben was there, Mike and Alex were there and then they disappeared. Like They're, I literally haven't seen them since. And Ellie, it was Ellie, Annie and Nikki. You and Ben weren't going hard? Not any harder than the rest of the people in our party. But that was, I mean, we just got on roller coasters. I know, but. But it, one after another, and I was concerned. Uh, I got on the first one. It was it was rather intense. Um, the Colossal? Yeah, you go through it, and then all of a sudden, you're on, you're, you're going through it again. It's like, it's like riding the same roller coaster twice. Don't know how they did it, but I found myself doing it. And when, so I thought it was over, and then I was like, whoa, we're going around again on a parallel track that's a different color, but we're doing basically the same thing. Pretty cool, unless you're ready to get off. <laughs> and at that point, I literally said to myself, silently, focus on your breathing, because I, I you don't want to get a headache. Headache prevention. Yeah, you might get dehydrated, and if your brain is shaking you around You are panicking in there, about I'm life. already a little dehydrated, and <laughs> I was mostly concerned about getting a headache. <laughs> But you're not thinking like, you're not scared that you're gonna, you don't have irrational fears no, about not, roller coasters. it's not like I had just watched a video of people who literally died on an amusement park ride. Well, I mean, because I, I rode- That was a, a different I rode a roller coaster with Lizzie and she had irrational fears about dying on the roller coaster. That's why That's why I, I avoided her the rest of the day yeah. because she has a knack for- But then at the end she was like, oh, this is fine. Decompartmentalizing my fears. This is fine, that's what she was saying. As like hers are, that's how she she knows no compartment. That's how she was enjoying this roller coaster. It was like she was freaking out as we were getting on. And she was like, "This is a mistake. This is a mistake." And then she was like, "This is fine. This is, I never heard anybody enjoy a roller coaster." She wasn't going like, "Woo!" She's like, "This is fine. This is okay." Yeah, she was talking to herself, <laughs> and I was on the other side of the park, going hard. <laughs> uh, I focused on my breathing in order to not get a headache, and then I. Uh, Somehow still got a headache. I think I was dehydrated. Right, you didn't have enough water. I don't know. Should have bought a pack. Constantly drinking water. Should have bought extra water in I that pack. I think I'm addicted to water. I think my body. There are worse things. Needs too much of it. It's it's spoiled. But then I'm constantly giving it water. But then we were, that we finished up the day by riding uh, along with Stevie. We rode the uh, what was that called? Ta uh, tatsu. T t tatsu. Tatsu. Which, unlike anything I've ever experienced before. Uh, this is like one of was those horizontal hang, <laughs> hangy down, so like dangly roller coasters. So like if you remember like the Big Bad Wolf from Bush Gardens, you're an, you got an ankle dangle, but you're but so this you're one, in no. this thing and your 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 ankles are dangling, but you kind of notice that like your shins are like locked in, and then there's like a very, like a soft sort of chest plate kind of thing, and this is all makes sense because right before the thing takes off, it leans you forward into a flying position. And at that point, I got very concerned because that's when I start thinking about safety. And I and and, and what I think is a rational fear because I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, it's one thing to have like G-forces push you down into a seat, which is like a part of the track, you know, part of the whole thing. But when all your weight is being put on a restraint that just moments ago was open. Yeah. So I know and you that know it opens. It does open. It is possible to open. So so, so if it did open now, I would just I'd plop out. Well, and so the, and the plop would take a long time because we were high. It's up the, in the high. Air. It is the highest, longest, and fastest. Uh, ro not ro flying roller coaster in the nation in the world. It's like if you were in your bedroom. And then somebody picked up the house and turned it on its side, and you 
you fell out of your bedroom into the front door, which was closed. And then you're soaring through the air, like rocketing away from Earth to some other land. And you know that that door opens all the time. I go in and out of that door all the time. Uh, and let's say that the door opens out. Is this analogy working? No. Nope. But I know what you were trying to say. It's like if you're leaning on a front door, which they usually open out. This is a great analogy. But you don't really have to make an analogy when you have the actual object that's in the story already. Yeah. Like literally we're in a roller coaster that has a restraint that could open at any time. We don't really have to have an analogy. We can just explain how freaked out we were because. I, I, what makes you think I don't agree? I was super freaked out and I noticed it was we were in a flying motion and you can, my hair is a lot longer than normal. Right? Still, I, I cut it but it's still long, right? Yeah. And so the first thing I noticed is when we started flying, it all just covered my eyes. <laughs> it just all went straight down over that my may, eyes. That may be a good thing. I couldn't see anything and my arms were locked in. I couldn't and I didn't want to. You didn't want to touch your hair because yeah. that's not gonna save you. Right. But the that's whole time I was thinking. Do. It's tough for you not to touch your cause hair. Because I, I started thinking. Even in a life or death situation. I started think, thinking things like, I weigh a lot compared to normal people. You know? If any, if any one of these I, front doors is gonna fails, open, it's gonna, it's gonna be, be mine. mine. Right. Well, I never thought about any of that. I was like, well, this is a crazy cool experience. It was a great ride. I focus on my breathing so I don't get a headache. But then Morgan was riding this with us and Stevie and he said he was white knuckling that thing the whole time because he said if it did hinge open, he was he was dead set on dangling <laughs> that would have never by worked. his arms as, <laughs> as long as it took. But as fast as we were going, uh, you know, on a wing and a prayer, brother. I mean, how quickly would they, if that one of those things opened, I wonder how quickly the roller coaster would stop. Somebody would have to see it. Or maybe there's like a sensor that sends a message back. I don't know. Well, I, don't, you, I don't like to think about it. Do you remember our sound guy, Ben was telling me this right when we got to the park. Another thing I had to compartmentalize, Rich, our sound guy on yeah. some stuff. A number of remember. things, yeah, a number of things. Well, he used to, he said, he used to work at Six Flags and one day we came in earlier and we were running one of the coasters and, and it launched off of the thing and landed in the parking lot and paralyzed a security guard. The whole roller coaster? One of the cars from the roller coaster did this. And. It hit the freaking guy who was just in the parking lot. Yeah, and Ben told Eddie, and Eddie who grew up around here was like, yeah, I remember seeing that on the news. Rich I mean, was there. I'm not saying it was Rich's fault, but. It happens. That's the thing is that these things fail, rides fail, and someone's gonna be on them when they fail, and it's like you, it's a, it's a, you know, the chances that you're in a wreck on the way to the amusement park are way higher than something happening to you while you're on one of the rides. So if you just analyze the t the statistics, well, you really have nothing to fear. But you can't. You I was only fearing a heat stroke or dehydration, and I and it felt like enough of a survival situation that it, it sounds like we neither of us were amused. I mean, I I, I left thinking my lucky stars that I made it out of their lives. Yeah, you're like, I don't have a headache, and I'm like, well, my back still feels good, and you know, my I knees did. didn't, well, my, had, my femurs didn't break. I had a little bit of a headache. Yeah, a little bit. But I wasn't really thirsty. So, it's cool, it's cool to spend the day somewhere and then be able to say at the end of it, you know, I'm not that thirsty. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> that's, that's success. success. Oh yeah, you must have had a good time. I'm not really thirsty. Um, I don't care how long it takes. We got to give them the New York City. Yeah, update. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was going to move into. Uh, so yeah, we just we got back from a week, oh eight days in New York City. You know, we 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 had the the Fallon appearance and the Ryan and Kelly appearance, which turned out to be the Kelly and Andy appearance. And um, yeah, I still want to meet Ryan Seacrest. And then we yeah, I was looking forward to that. But then I was, Ryan, you're going to have to come to us. It was a great okay. meeting, Andy. Yeah, well, maybe we'll go back on the but, show. But we. Um, and then we tacked a, a handful of days. We brought we brought the whole crowd. So we had the wives and the children, and uh, all the children. Maybe. Yeah. So nine I, of us. I kept threatening things like, "We're not going to bring you if you don't have a better attitude, or if you don't yeah. blah blah blah." You know, you hang things they all, over there. They all did they all pretty know well. Empty. They, they all did Hollow. pretty well. I'm saying and, before we went, and none of them had ever been in New York City. And right. We we've, we've been in New York City quite a bit, but we're always there for such a short period of time that we you know we haven't done a lot of the touristy things, you know, Empire State Building, Statue of Liberty and et cetera. 
Broadway show. Like you had never seen a Broadway show, right? And I don't. No. I seen one in the '90s, but so, I hadn't seen one since. So we were doing all that and taking the kids so that they could experience that for the first time. But I mean, starting with Fallon, I mean, they were really excited to be there. Now they they were bummed because you have to be 16 to be in the audience. Yeah, or something like that. Um, so I mean, we might could have. Lily and Locke, we might could have snuck them in. They might could have passed for 16 in the in proper lighting, tonight show lighting. Right. Which we would have been fine with that, but you, the other kids would have been upset. So they just stayed in our dressing room. We each had a dressing room. And so what, we gave one to them and then we just took the, the other one. And it being the third appearance on the tonight show, I we were finally, it, it says a lot that we were comfortable enough to make an appearance on a show that means a lot to us uh, because it's the Tonight Show. That's super cool. And to be invited back for a third time is awesome. So there's a lot of pressure that, that we put on ourselves that goes along with that, but it says a lot that we were comfortable enough to bring our entire entourage, meaning all of our blood, immediate blood relatives, to like be running around the place. And 30 Rock is a cramped place. It's, yeah. like, it's not like, oh kids, you just, you'll have plenty of room and no one's gonna notice. It's like, I was pretty, you know, we yeah. had to be pretty confident that like, okay, we're gonna be comfortable bringing our kids in this environment, like putting them in this room and doing well, this yeah. thing. So, so. To, to give you like a an idea, I mean, all this, this building was built a long time ago and a lot of entertainment has taken place in this building, but it's so interesting because you've got like, you know, you've got The Tonight Show on one floor and then you go up another floor and you've got Seth Meyers, you go up another floor and you've got SNL, like it's all happening Mm-hmm. Right there together, but and I don't know if the, I've got the facts right on that, but basically that's how it is. What floors on what? What's on but what floor? But the the really interesting thing. And it feels kind of like an office building when you're backstage. Like it's a small like, hallway, and then everybody has like their dressing room, and we were just very, you know, because even here at our space in Burbank, it's like it's like open, and there's like a skylight because we're just you know we're not in a tall office building, but it's like mm-hmm. there, it's like. It's, it was built for, for efficiency a long time ago. So it's all, and then all of a sudden you kind of go in this hallway and boom, you're in the room, you're, you're, you're on the set, you're, you, you, and there's the audience. It's, yeah, it's a, like, how did this, it's all very how did tight. This room fit in here, like the whole set, it's, it's crazy. But what, one of the things I, I did notice is people, um, a, a few of you commented on some of the videos and I saw this on social media as well. They're like, oh, you, you guys are at the Tonight Show for the third time in, 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 a, in a year. You guys must be, close personal friends with Jimmy now. He's, he's bringing you back. Mm, yeah, which is true. I mean, it's cool. It's like, it's nice to now be friends with Jimmy, to like, like so bef- before, it's like that morning we get up and it's like, hey guys, you wanna come play handball? Yes, we it's play. Like, I've, yeah, I've never played handball. Is it like racquetball, but just with your hand? Right. So I didn't know until we showed up. At Jimmy's personal handball court, right in his apartment, which is crazy, awesome, and all we had, all we needed were hands. He right. had the balls, and then he was like, later, cracking jokes. Later, he's so funny. If you guys want to come back later after the show, we can do. He says, usually third time guests, sleepover time. Yes, don't bring the kids, don't bring the wives. Right, just so bring that the night, sleeping bag. It was a little bit awkward, but we in had your hands. we had a sleepover. His wife and his kid were were there, but. We didn't interact with them very much. We just played more handball. Right. Yeah. And by handball, at this point, we still mean handball. And what I'm really saying is that this is all a lie. We didn't do any of this. I mean, Jimmy is nice enough to, co- he comes backstage be- while we're getting ready and he like says, hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for coming back. And we're like, we're so glad to be back. This is awesome. Yeah. Uh, don't men- There's no mention of handball. Yeah. It's just like we're grateful to be here, yeah. and he's very gracious and seems happy to have us. I mean, it's their invitation every time. Well, think about it. He and then we do it. This then this, he leaves, and then we come out and we do the show, and then this is a guy we who, don't see him who again. hosts a show uh, that has different guests on it every single night, and I'm sure that he is actual personal close personal friends and plays handball with some of the guests that how he has many on there. How many people can you play handball with? Right, really. And, um, but no, so to, how many to, hands to answer have? that question. First, just start with that. How many hands does Jimmy Fallon have? Jimmy has been incredibly welcoming. How many does he have? He's got two hands. Two. We got two. We got six between the six of us. Six between the three of us. 
but uh, he's incredibly accommodating and nice and welcoming and it's always great to see him and we do have a legitimate conversation in, you know, when we're not doing the show. But no, it's not like, he can't hang out. I mean, he can't just hang out with people who come on a show. That's all he would ever do. And the same goes for us. If you come on our show, we can't hang. We can't hang with you. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. It's but like I, I think the thing that that I we don't even play handball. I've never played it. But we the, and the first time I play it, it can't be with you. Right. I think the thing that I was thinking was, you know, there was a certain level of nervousness the first time we went on, and I don't think any of this. If you go back and watch the clips or whatever, I don't think any of this really shows. But. I was very nervous the first time. Mm. And, and and this is nervousness that is before we come out. For I think for both of us, as soon as the as soon as the curtain opens and we're on the couch, we're not nervous anymore. It's the it's the days leading up to it and then the minutes right before the curtain opens and they call our name like that's a very nerve-wracking thing. But I was I say the second time we went on, I was half as nervous and then this time I was a third as nervous. It's like decreasing by a percentage every time. Well, the next time we're not gonna be zero nervous. No, we'll be a, not healthy. a fourth as nervous. So it's um, it's inversely it's proportional ad, to. Asymptotic. Yeah, you'll never not be nervous, but my theory is that you go down at a rate of a fraction of the number of times you've been there. But a function never touches its asymptote. Exactly. So you know there's always gonna be a, a certain low level of nervousness. And there needs to be. But I, I mean, we have that on our own show. But Good I Mythical Morning. This I didn't show like do. think like, you know, I wasn't like. If we ever get back to doing that show, having like diarrhea, you know, like you know, I think the first time we went on, I probably crapped like three or four times that day. You know, you begin to evacuate everything because your body's like you're going into battle, sucker. Evacuate so you can be light on your feet. I probably took one crap that day. Good. This time, you know, I didn't count, but I will next time. And so, but this time it's like Jimmy comes back and it's like, hey. Our kids are here, come in here and we got some photos with them. I even tweeted, oh, I, I got a photo and I tweeted it. That's pretty good, man, for me. Pretty good for you, Link. I tweeted a photo that I took, but I was proud, man. I'm proud of those children of ours and wives. The wives weren't in it, because the wives weren't in the picture because they we're, were in the audience. They're over 16. They're over right. 18, which okay. is even more important, and they were <laughs> out there in the audience wow. at the time that we took the picture with the Fallon. And then afterward, they did a behind the scenes. Hey, can you guys do a behind the scenes for our channel? We're like, absolutely. So let's do it with the kids. So like we go in there where the kids are and if you haven't seen it, you should watch it. But the, the miraculous thing is that Lando was in the video. I can't, I can't, I can barely get him to, to be- In a picture. In a picture and he likes, a still to he likes to take pictures, but he doesn't like to be in pictures. Um, a lot of photographers are like that. Yeah, he's like Banksy. Mm -hmm who's not a photographer. No. I know what he is. But it's similar. I, I, you didn't have to explain that analogy. I get it. It's he like, wants you to see his art, It's like if you were in him. Banksy's house and it was like rocketing off of Earth to another place. Yeah, and, don't go there. Um, but I asked, I was like, hey guys, Lando, you wanna be in a behind the scenes video? And he sits down and we're like all sitting, you know, we're sitting on the couch and they ask us like superlatives, who would get the award and like we get the kids to, to say which of us should get certain awards, like most likely best gift giver and stuff like that. Um, and Lando's sitting there the whole time in the video. And I'm thinking, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe. And so then after I was like, Lando, I'm super proud of you for being in the video. Um, and he was like, I thought you said, do you wanna watch a behind the scenes video? <laughs> That explains a lot. So he said, because behind the, the a TV. behind the guy who was filming us, there was a television that showed they while they were behind while they were backstage in our dressing room, they could watch the show being filmed. So they were able to watch it from backstage, and then they thought he was he thought he was going to sit down with us and watch it behind so he the was scenes. Just, he was just waiting for whatever was happening to be over, so or, he could watch. I think by the time he got he, into he it, it he knew what was happening, and it was too late. He wasn't going to show show his butt. He so wasn't to going to walk out in the middle of the video. Um, who would do that? Yeah, I did, <laughs> and we don't have to bring up why I did. But I don't think you want to relive that. You no, just, I you don't. can watch the video. So I showed. So Jesse was watching this. My wife was watching the video, and she's very self conscious, uh, very conscious about Shepard's haircut and how it looked in the video. Here's why. So if you watch the video, because she's like, "You didn't fix Shepard's hair." I'm like, "Nobody cares. He's an eight year old kid." But what happens is, if you look at Shepard's hair, it looks like 
because it is, his hair is just like combed down and just cut straight across like a home, huh? like a home cut. Now we paid for the haircut and I'm gonna tell you why it looks like this. So what she likes to do because she doesn't is want Is this it, explanation something that, did Jesse want you to explain this? Is this gonna, on the show? Is this gonna make things better? Yeah. Uh, uh, well yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> we, it, she, she's not gonna care. She likes us to, because of what happened with the haircut, which I'll explain, which is a funny story. She likes me to push it to the side so it looks somewhat stylish. So if you look at that video, it's just like his hair is just like straight across, bangs like cut straight across his forehead. Because he'd been in that room running around. No, but here's what happened. So we, um, Jesse was taking Barbara to the vet, and so she had Barbara in the car with her, and but Shepard had to get a haircut, and so she takes Shepard into the place to get a haircut, and uh, she kind of tells him what to do, and then she's like, "I'm going to go to the car." to be with the dog. Can't leave a car, in, can't leave a dog in the car. Or a car and a dog, that would be but bad. Unfortunately, what that means is that you've got an eight year old who is Shepherd, who you know is very vocal and he's gonna tell you what he thinks. Oh, and what he wants. Is now directing the haircut process. Oh. oh. <laughs> so what happened is, is while Jesse was like. Calm it all down and cut it straight across. She was like, don't cut the front too short. That's what she said. Because we wanna kind of be able to like swoop it to the side, oh. right? But what happened was is the barber or the stylist, I don't know what kind of place it was, basically Shepard told Jesse, he was like, I just kept telling him take more off of the, <laughs> take more of the front because I don't like it to go in my eyes. So <laughs> somehow Shepard, an eight year old, was able to convince this Well it is his hair. Barber to basically just halfway up his forehead just cut it straight across and that's that's what his hair looks like now. But it's your fault for not styling it before the behind the scenes video. Yeah, well that's she, she didn't really care and I said, eh, but it's cute, right? It just it looks like a bad haircut but it's cute, it's on an eight year old. She well, doesn't it, really care but I think the lesson learned is did like. Did people scrutinize his hair in the comments? No, nobody noticed. Well it's now, funny. Now that I talked that, about it, people will. You know, well that, that picture that I just bragged about tweeting, within 10 minutes, I got people talking about the stain on Lando's shirt. And then and then a kind mythical beast went so far as to photoshop the stain off of his shirt. I'm like and then repost the photo without the stain because enough people were talking about the stain on his shirt. First of all, it was a it was a water stain. It was no stain at all. It was a moist spot that a 7-year-old and then there were like people who had kids or experienced with kids chiming in in the comments section and saying things like, listen, there are huge victories going on here and not even just having him in a picture or a video, which they didn't even appreciate, but just the fact that you got a kid all in one piece in public right, ha with a little bit of stain is not an issue. But um, oh yeah, so again, this is the reason why we're, you know, we're a little calculated about putting our kids or loved ones on camera because you can't help but pick apart the, the one thing. Like there's this great photo and then you're talking about the stain. Now I think most of it was just in good fun. It's like yeah. no one was ripping him a new one because people, it, he was stained. People stain. just like to find something that they can point but out. But it was funny that they did and then it, it was a funny choice to Photoshop it off. I think that person did it as a, as a way to make fun of the people who were talking about it, not sincerely, I don't think. Right. I wasn't offended, I'm not offended now, but I do think it's a little funny that there was a whole sub, Subthread about the stain on Lando's shirt. Well, speaking of subthreads, for the Ryan and Kelly, Kelly and Ryan, Kelly and Andy appearance, uh, you know that video was uh, of us cooking the steak with the irons that was posted on the Kelly and Ryan Facebook page, which then Jesse brought up the comments that the people who normally I enjoy love, Kelly and Ryan. Yeah, I love videos. it when this happens. I don't know what it is, but I love it when it. But happens. But you can only imagine what the average. Uh, viewer of Kelly and Ryan. They thought we were highly intelligent, thoughtful human yeah. beings who know our culinary experts. Exactly. So there were there were comments like, you know, essentially, who are these fools? Why did you have them on? This is not safe. They ruined an iron. You oh know, people, goodness! Pe pe four irons. People, oh great! People who are just not we ruined not, four irons. They probably wouldn't enjoy our content. But then Jesse was pointing out the fact that. A, a good number of mythical beasts had gone in yes. and then defended us. And she was like, um, and they defended you in a very thoughtful way. It was like very tactful and they were like, these are 
I mean, people did say something like, you know, do you not have a sense of humor or whatever? But mm. um, you know, you don't have to. You don't have to feel the need to to defend us. But I do appreciate it when you do. But I, it, the crowd wasn't necessarily ready for what we were going to do. But the crowd in the studio was very they responsive. They were into it. Very responsive in the moment. Well, we walked out there for a rehearsal, and they were live morning shows are just like it's like chaos on camera and then that everything backstage is like what's happening what's happening we, you know we had our we had like the cooking thing over to the side like a side stage but on the main stage the show wasn't happening they were showing footage and i think f- filming the audience their reactions to it may my theory is to get more reactions or just to show them something while they were waiting but we come out and the producer's like saying, all right, we're gonna walk you through this thing. She tells me this, because I'm in the front of the line, you're walking behind me. And we walk out there, people are watching the show on a screen in front of the set. But then we come out and like there's people cheering for us. And then I turn around and I look at Rhett and he's got this panicked look on his face and he says, is this it? <laughs> like for a second you thought we were doing it. Well, because we I had, knew it was a rehearsal, but we were in front of the whole crowd. It was just strange because we had been backstage in this kitchen and we like went through the recipe and knew what we were going to do. And then you were talking to the producer and I was kind of like I was thinking a about little, your throat. I was a little removed from that. No, thankfully at the time my throat felt fine. Okay. Um because it was the morning. That's when it feels good. And uh, but when we went out there, yes, like everybody drinking was, some water. Everybody was here. looking at us, and we were very, very close to the like the audience was extremely close to us. Like it was very intimate. Yes, and so they're all looking at us, and I'm like, I thought it was a rehearsal, but n- no one told me it was a rehearsal, and now I'm like, are we gonna have to do this? And then she was like, Oh, you're not doing this right now. But we did stay out there for ten minutes or so like going through what we were gonna do and this is where we're gonna stand or whatever and everybody's just kinda watching us do it. It was a you, little, you little hate awkward. That. You hate, I mean it's like, oh, if yeah. you're a musician uh, who has to go out and do a sound check in front of an audience, you t- you can totally relate to this but, and w- cause we've had that experience too. It's like having to do a sound check in front of people I don't or having like, to rehearse I just in front don't of people, like to do something it's, it's, I'm not saying halfway before you do it all the way. Yeah, I don't even yeah. like. It's about in front of the people who are gonna see it all the way. And also, but you you hate it more than I do. And I purposely like even when like we do like rehearsals on Buddy System, I purposely don't like to yeah hold back act in the way that I'm going to act, which I found interesting when we worked with Michael McDonald, not the singer, the actor, and uh, we were like giving him some direction in the rehearsal. We, we rehearsed, and then after we were walking away, and we started to say something about and he was his like, characterization. He's like, I like to hold, I, I, I like to hold back on rehearsal. And I was like, yeah, me, me too. Me too. And I was like, okay, sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to try to tell you. I didn't think that's what you were gonna do, but I just wanted you to know what, and then it was like, I'm gonna stop talking now. But a lot of people have commented on the picture that Stevie posted to her, her Instagram of the three of us. Uh huh. And people, at least one person was like, what is Rhett thinking with that look on his face? And the thing I'm thinking is that. What, what described the look? Well, okay, what were you it's thinking? It's just an uncomfortable, it's just, a, it looks a little constipated and it's just, not, I'm obviously not comfortable. Mm-hmm. Again, I don't like to, I don't like to be in front of people unless I'm actually in front of them and I'm doing something where I'm kind of like, I kind of know what my role is and I'm in control. Like people something. watching you get a photo taken for another set of people is weird. A whole audience of people watching me get a picture taken I, that's the look I have. That's the look I have. You can see that on Stevie's Instagram. Maybe we'll put it in the in the video as well. But <laughs> that's that's the look of a man who's a little uncomfortable. It's the look of a man who's uncomfortable because he's posing for a photo while other people are watching that yeah. pose. Yeah, it was a success. But yeah, I, I'm I you know I don't know if they if if the winner will have been will have been determined by the time this podcast goes. I don't know what the time that the, uh, but you can like retweet their tweet about us. Well, and that's the, how the, it goes. To, the, the way that these things works is. The way that these things they, works. They, they get people from the internet to come on their show because people from the internet can get people to vote for stuff and like to churn social media. It's all a big game. And it's, it's I mean, it's game. just how it works. So it's like, you know, you guys are extremely loyal and you, you love to support us. And I'm not, 
It's a, and we were very glad to be there. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I'm just saying that's just how it works. They wanna get a, people churning comments and votes and stuff like that. It's good for their show. It's good for us. It's good. Everybody wins. And, and, a, as, and a as long as you're not doing it out of sense of obligation, but you're doing it because it's fun to support us and in, their, we, in their and, show. And if we win, then ten thousand dollars will be donated to a charity of our choice. Which um, we've got a number of charities that we've, you know, we've partnered with in the past. I don't know if we've made a decision about which one we're going to do, but it'll be one that we've, you know, vetted and. I hope that and didn't didn't past. sound like I didn't care about the charity. I'm just saying that, like, let's be real a lot of times the first thing people think about is not let's come up with something to give money to charities. Let, let's come up with something to like churn social media and let's also benefit charity as a, as another thought, as a separate thought. That's a, the best thought, but it may not be the first thought. And that's just how things work. It's all about entertainment though, man. It's all about entertainment, right? I have no clue. <laughs> Um, but then we shifted, once we did those two things, we, we tried to be very disciplined to say, personal okay. Personal time. To, to the personal time to like, that was fun for the kids. They gotta be in the audience for Ryan and Kelly and um, th they made an exception for our family to let them do that even though there was an age limit there and that was a cool experience for them. Um, but then we had to go on the sightseeing tour. I think we went to the top of the Empire State Building, we rode the subways, we walked around. I know you love New York City because you gush about it every time we go and like the first thing Rhett does every time we go is we're walking around. He's like, look, we're just walking around. Every time you turn a corner, something else. I love it. And man. I look down and there's like, there's like metal doors underneath stuff. I just want to go down in there yeah, and look it. up there. It's like people living up there and windows. And you're just, it's just like um, a kid in a candy shop and a bull in a china shop together. I didn't break That's anything. You. I didn't break anything. Well, who knows? No, but I do love it. It's, it's, it. it is my favorite city in the world. So the kids experienced that. But it wasn't, it isn't, I'm not, I'm not saying I'd rather live there than Los Angeles, but it's my favorite city to visit. I absolutely love it. I do love the fact that. It's like, it's like walking around in an exciting gift shop. I just love it's, how every single step you take. There's riding a bull. There's something else that somebody is doing that's just notable. It might be somebody's acting crazy. Somebody's off their rocker. Somebody's having sexual intercourse in an alleyway. I saw that. You seriously I saw I seriously that. saw that this time. And I was walking with my son when it happened, but <laughs> I did not point it out to him. It's like the Wild West or something? What, where were you walking? Well, this is another interesting thing this about is like this the, trip is that Locke, you know, has moved on from, from, from diving to basketball and he's very serious about basketball. <laughs> And he was very, he's trying out for his school team. So he's like very, he was like, dad, I can't have seven days where I don't play basketball. So we got him a basketball while we were out there. And he went to like the public courts, like the street, street ball courts on the Lower East Side, which, you know, it's not like real street ball there, but it was pretty street. And he well, went there. Well, there were streets nearby. He went like four times and played like real pickup basketball with like real city dudes who were very happy to welcome him. And we actually let him walk out there by himself a couple of times. Like he was like, I'm gonna go early in the morning, is it okay? And I'm like, yeah, he's like, dad, I did like a crime analysis of this part of the city. Like, you know, you know my son. What? Yeah, he's like, dad. Uh, no, I'll take that at face value. Yeah, he's like, it's actually much safer here than it would be in downtown Los Angeles. Like he's got he, all. He, well, he really wanted to go, so he yeah. had some data. Yeah, but anyway, but one time I went down there with him and then walked back and that was when I passed the people having a, a transaction of some sort in the alley. And uh, you know, it took me a second to figure out what was going on. At first I looked up and I was like, did that girl lose something and that guy's helping her? No, 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 no. <laughs> How far away? Um, Could you have thrown a basketball and oh broke yeah. it up? Oh yeah, I mean, I don't know if I've got that good at aim, but 30 yards. Stay. But when I realized they weren't- Hit the right spot. They weren't looking for a lost item. They were fine in love. Um, I just scurried on. I did a double. I did a double take because you don't get to see that every day. Was this in daylight? Oh yeah, it was in daylight. What but, on earth? But it was, it was down an alley on a stoop in the alley. I'm sorry that I brought this up. And uh, it was, it was not a good scene. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, 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 it didn't seem like a romantic moment. It seemed like a. 
it seemed like a transactional moment. Oh. And um, I didn't <laughs> dwell on it very long. I hadn't thought about it again until you brought it up. <laughs> but I just knew that this is, as now this is the thing. Are you a compartmentalist? My instinct was to turn to the guy that I'm with and be like, dude, check that out. But I realized the dude was my 13 year old son. I was like, eh, I probably shouldn't point that out to him. He doesn't need to see that yet. <laughs> so I told you about it when I got <laughs> And there I brought it up here. Yeah, yeah. And now we roll the footage for the video viewing. You know, I did view the whole. I did video the whole thing. No, you, know, you didn't. But I, 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 I love the city, and I was having the best time until now, I was. Can Can I say my highlight? Worried about my throat the whole time, but I was having the best time. Other than that, okay. My highlight. Well, I mean, I think t t taking being with the family and seeing these things, like we don't go on sightseeing tours a lot, but like all of that, we did a food tour one day, ate a lot of food. Yeah. What you saw like Bob Dylan's house and where he first performed and where yeah. Jimi Hendrix first performed. Awesome. It's like Caf and Cafe eat, Wa. Eat and a lot of food, It was that was great. Um, but just experiencing that, you you know, with my family and with your family, like that, I mean that's, that takes the cake. That's the biggest thing. But if, if there's one like small highlight, it was actually, we went to the American Museum of Natural History right on the edge of uh, Central Park, Neil deGrasse Tyson's uh, observatory, uh, planetarium. I'm saying it's his, but he's like the, I don't know, he's, he's the guy the, He's the it. public face of it. That was, we saw like a cool planetarium movie. I we tweeted about that, the dark universe. I we, said it was very moving. And then we come right outside and we go to Shake Shack and get burgers and shakes and they're just, it's like, it's in LA now and I've had it here and it is amazing, but it was just like to have it there in, well, in, we, we in the middle of. We definitively. Determined we def that it's both of our favorite burgers. Yeah, well everybody, everybody, everybody nice to was agree like, on something. this is the best burger. The Shake Shack has the best burger. But I got burned in my experience. Metaphorically? Like, literally. Uh, I, um, I burnt my mouth on a crinkle cut fry. <laughs> The roof of my mouth, because I waited a long time for that, uh, that burger and that fry, and I think it was the fry that did Ooh, it. You, ate, you did a pre-fry. You reached in the bag when yep. you had the bag. You right when that. I got it, and then I, I burnt the roof of my mouth, and then I did something that I learned you should never do. Burn the roof of your mouth, and then immediately start sucking down a shake, and I applied vacuum pressure and the, the, the end of the straw just so happened to be at the place where I hadn't yet realized it, I had burnt the roof of my mouth with the crinkle cut fry. But typically that would be a good treatment though, a cold liquid like that. And maybe that's what I was instinctively doing. But creating the vacuum to, to get this thick uh, beverage out of the straw, I'm talking about the milkshake here. It, it made the burn bubble up. Oh gosh. And it made it hurt bad the next day. It really didn't take full form until the next day. I was so like, you didn't man, have to think about this that is not just a burn. While you're eating yeah, the, the whole time I'm eating it, I'm like, I'm sucking down this shake and like every time I'm unknowingly making the burn worse. Like I'm making the roof of my mouth like very tender and very bubbly. Like three distinct bubbles where I was like, <laughs> From one fry? From No, from the shake after the one fry, yeah. The burn then got and and just now, as of last night, I can I can eat normally again. <laughs> I mean, we're talking five days of like having to eat on the right side of the roof of my mouth. You know how hard it is to keep food on one side of the roof of your mouth? Huh, it's real hard. <laughs> I had to do that, man. But that doesn't denigrate the fact that that burger and that and I, it was a vanilla shake. I didn't even get the peanut butter shake. You went plain. Well, I've gotten the peanut butter shake here in uh, Glendale, at the Glendale location, and it was lacking. I'm really? being real here. Oh. But the vanilla I shake haven't been there, and I don't, was amazing. I don't it do was, the shakes anymore. It was blister inducing heaven. And but the burger was just. So good. You know, you and again, and I, here's, what I, here's what I said, because I, I try not to eat, I, I, I try to eat healthy. Uh, I did not eat healthy while we were in New York. I just ate whatever I wanted to, and I think I'm suffering because of it. But I was like, I'm not going to go back and just eat sh Shake Shack all the time in Glendale. I can't do that. No, it's going to be the special. New York. It's going to be a special New, New York, York special. thing. 
But we know it's in Glendale. But I was like. We can go there if we have to. The bun? Oh gosh. The burger, which, you know, the bun and the burger are the two, the condiments are, you know, that's up to you, but the thing that the, the restaurant is really making a choice for you is the way they do their bun and they like, to, it's like a buttered toasted bun and the burger is just unbelievable. We were literally sitting, uh, we're sitting here, we went on this big long trip, days, days and days of like sightseeing and we're sitting here like going on and on about a burger. Yeah. It's that good and they're not even paying us. Yeah. But we're gonna send them a bill. Yeah, can you do that? Can you do an ad for somebody then send them a bill? We're gonna try. Shake Shack, you'll be getting Shake a Shack's bill getting from a Mythical bill Entertainment. From the Linkster, at least the Redster. A, at least 100 bucks. At least 100 bucks. Yeah, triple digits for we that You could buy handballs with that kind of money. How much does a handball cost? Well, a good handball run you run you $50. I mean, a good one. You get two. Get two handballs. That one way for you, we, one for if, me. Well, you only need one at a time, but if we lose it's one. It's a backup ball. Can you lose a handball? It's an enclosed if, room. Yeah, but if you got a, like a if you got like a drain without a without a top on oh, it, don't have a handball court with a drain or crack the door. No, open. you need a drain because you need to what you got to spray it down after a really intense game. And then I can't not talk about the Lion King. We'll talk about it. They're, they're we gonna, went are to they the, gonna pay us as well? Yeah, we're gonna send them a bill on the Lion King. <laughs> Disney, Disney's getting a bill because we talked about how great the Lion King was. I'm sorry for yelling. Um, well. We need to like put a little beep in, in in retrospect that like people will know, Mythical Beast will know, Link's about to yell, that beep means like hold the ear earphones or the earbuds, pull them out. Ah, I think you'll be fine. Compression, man, limit. Lim- it down. Lim- it didn't even limiting. hurt him? No. I'm just trying, I'm trying to be sensitive. I don't wanna, I don't wanna turn anybody away because we're, we're getting that Disney money. Now. The uh, Lion King. Now, I think we, we talked a little bit about this but I, I didn't talk about it enough. I um, I think m- you and me both, us, teared up very early on in the Lion King. I can tear up right now thinking about it. I, Listen, the, the, I mean, I teared up. The I, opening vocal was amazing. I mean, it's like you got this, you got a character which turned out to be a the baboon. A baboon. I didn't know. We that. didn't know that until the very end. <laughs> yeah. It's like I didn't I didn't make any well, that singing woman could, is incredible. You know what? I compartmentalized the movie The Lion King from this experience and they were totally separate. So I did I wasn't trying to figure out now well, it's is been that, a while since is I've that seen the baboon the Lion who King. holds up the baby? We should have no. known it because she held up Simba at the very yeah. beginning. But even before that, she bust out singing. Unbelievable. And the voice was just amazing. And there was a guy off to the side singing too, and the two of them were singing in another language. Yeah, and it didn't matter what they were saying. But like, as the animals come in, because and I, then this, it was two giraffes. It was it was a person giraffe. Well, I mean, I I think most people do have some idea of how the Lion King musical works. But we're like, behind on this one. I well, I I this knew, is not new. Did you not know that that's how it was? That it was going to be like these puppets and stuff. I did know. I I I'd been told, I'd seen, and I'd seen pictures. I'd seen pictures, but like when the cheetah girl. Well, you have to explain it. I don't care if people have seen it. It's a, it's one person on force on stilts. Well, that's your giraffe, yeah. That is the giraffe. But like, yes. the, not the, a, the cheetah. I know which one was the cheetah. Yeah, yeah. No, but I'm saying I don't think the cheetah had was had long legs and a long neck. I know that's a giraffe. No, but I'm saying that the cheetah. All of it. Cheetah was my favorite. All of it made me tear up. I teared up multiple times throughout it. When the giraffes walked out and they were singing the song, I started crying. <laughs> and then a cheetah comes out, and it's the, the back cheetah leg, was so graceful. The back leg. It's a woman whose legs are the back legs of a cheetah. And, and then she's puppeteering the front legs and her f- head is connected to the cheetah's head and when she moves her head, the cheetah's head moves. And it was like I've, I've so been, inventive and I've so I've never beautiful. liked puppets. I've been anti-puppet. But now you're pro-puppet. I'm so pro-puppet now. Lion King are, has made you pro-puppet. These puppet. are special puppets. These aren't just like you're normal puppets. You're pro-special puppet, not pro-normal puppet. I'm pro-special puppet. I'm pro-African Savannah special Lion King I think your puppet. pro puppet that has a person attached to puppet that you can see them puppeteering in a very well. They could have done costumes, so and it would have been like Disney on ice. Does that mean you're into ventriloquist now? Yes. No. 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 no definitely not. Because it was very different. That, no. But Although they didn't do the that. bird was very much ventriloquist. The bird was a ventriloquist, and, it was and I almost least, bought the bird. It was my least favorite. I I thought the part. bird was the, one of the best things. No. No. 
I love the bird's character. I love what the bird said. You didn't. You I weren't comfortable with I, the ventriloquy. The it was a less creative approach. But then I started thinking, what else could you do with a bird? They did what they had to do. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking all this. Yeah, I'm also thinking. I'm just thinking they could have been dressed up as animals, but instead they did this weird thing that's never been done before. When it's like, you 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 see the animal, but then you see the person, and you can focus on the person or the animal. Or the animal, and you make a choice, and you can make you can constantly be choosing to uh, appreciate the puppeteering or just the performance of the person, right? And the way that they were built, I mean, it was like inspiring. Yeah, it was in those those creative choices of how they 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 said we're not going to do a costume and we're not going to do puppets. We're going to do both, and we're not going to do either. And it's going to be something totally new, and it's going to make people be pro puppet. Yeah, we now we become pro puppet. So that was a highlight. That was a highlight. And for I was both literally tearing up when it just it was so it was so great. But I will say, I, I, I will say in, in an effort to to wrap things up here. Um the next to last day we were walking on the High Line, again another great experience. Met some friends from LA out there who were also in New York and we walked the High Line. The High Line is a it's the railroad that is suspended to uh, kind of next on to the, the west, river. It's the west side on the, the Hudson. And then they were bringing like freight and all this stuff on the, on the railway which was above where everyone walked around. But and now it's been restored lives. and turned into like a place where people can walk. And like an, like an, it's almost like a nature park way. That then walkway. goes like through the city and like there's people's apartments and buildings right up on it, super cool. Yeah, kinda long though. But yeah, I was walking next to you and <laughs> You're like, well, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm sitting, you know. And you, the moment I said it, I knew that it wasn't. I shouldn't have said it to you. Well, because you know, I now I'm on the. I, we represent very opposite ends of the spectrum, right? So I'm doing something that I know is completely irrational, right? I, this is totally irrational. I when I'm walking on the High Line, I'm seeing these apartments, and I'm like, I gotta, I gotta move here one day. Like that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, we need to do like I just we need to do like a year. We need to like well, how much is one of those apartments to rent for a year? We should just come here for a year just to spend a year in the city. Like your mind's racing a million places. I, 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 you're I'm you're in the future I'm and you're about, living there. And then like of course you and, can see the you, this oh, will be yeah. your daily commute. No, no. And and my son is exactly the same way. By the end of the trip, he's going to NYU to play back. You know, yeah, he, yeah. He, that, that's how we think. We've always been that way. It's like you go into a situation and then you immediately like put yourself in it. And Je- and Jesse's the same way. She's like. She, she, she gladly participates in that conversation. So I'm like, my mind is up here, I'm in the future, I'm thinking about this. I turn to you and you're like, well, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I wish I, I, I wish I had the ability to, 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 to think a little bit more out of my circumstances, but I think that by that point in the trip, you're ready to go. The home. logistics of everything kind of started to weigh on me. Like I, I, I'm really starting to understand how sensitive I am to to space, to personal space, and to by this point in the trip, like my fam, being in su- such close proximity to my family, my my kids, and the problems. I mean, Lando fell over and skinned his knee, and then we're having a mo- we're having this moment, and we're like searching for a band aid, and we're trying to like. Okay, just it's okay. Just keep it down. You're falling apart here, um, and the and then the the buildings start to close in on me. But they weren't actually. They we weren't moving. But yeah, I I recognize that. But it started, felt that way. And then it's just like you know my own space, and it's not about yeah. Maybe it's a little bit about comfort and about things that we've explored a lot a lot on this show. But um, it wasn't just that. So it would be an oversimplification to say, well, in this moment, I couldn't appreciate where I was and how amazing it was and anything like that, but it was also an accumulation of many days of uh, an, another world pressing in on me and a well, lot of. And having the, I mean, having the kids there, whew. it does get, you know. I, I, was, I was ready to get back. Yeah, I get, you know, I could not, I would not do well. I'd have to have a serious personality adjustment to be a stay-at-home dad. Like that would be a difficult thing for me to do. 
because just but for me i'm not putting it all on the kids it's no. like it, it was everything it was the environment and the, just the sheer mass of people like i even we asked lincoln like what do you think about new york city it was like it's a lot of people <laughs> we, we, and he was like feeling there's a lot of people really close up yeah well I did, and i did ask lincoln the sec the second night we were walking around i'm like what do you think about this place he's like meh <laughs> that, that was yeah, it's not for everybody. That was a, that was. I love I love to visit. Um, but the kids. I don't. I don't think I love to visit anywhere too long. But the kids. The kids. The kids have. You know. You know, kids have kid needs, and there are sometimes you're just like, man, I just like if we could just go, and we did this once, just go out on a date. But you know, he, with with our wives. And Stevie and Cassie, and that and that was a great night. But um, yeah, so well, yeah, when I I actually I think about some unrealistic scenario when I think about being there, I'm like, oh, this is like yeah, the kids are the kids are on their own now. The kids are in college or the kids are, <laughs> have their own careers, and we but, just go and spend a spend a, a summer in the city. But in fairness, every time I've left to bring it back to the amusement park for today, every time I've left an amusement park, I've been like, I'm ready to go home. And I definitely well, I feel that. I definitely thought it was like, man, wrangling these kids and keeping them all happy and like alive in this survival situation that is an amusement park. Boy, that really takes it out of you. And then actually, they weren't there today. And I kind of felt the same. So I'm like, hmm, this is a little bit of a wake up call. This is, right. It's not about the kids. This is a little bit, maybe it's, maybe it's me or maybe it's just the amusement park. But I was very, but yes. I did, there was a special feeling that I had when I got back home and I was like, this is relaxing, this is quiet. I know there's mountains there, but I can't see it through the smog. That's comforting. something to that. But yeah, I, I, I was glad to be back and I was like, I'm glad we live here. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying I wanna live in New York City. Well, you wanna live everywhere, just be real. I, I don't wanna, I wanna live wherever I go. <laughs> I put myself there and I'm like, hmm, this, I gotta, how could I, get, how gotta live here? But no one summers in New York City. Yeah. That's what they always tell you, you summer somewhere else. Yeah, it's too hot. Wow. Thanks for hanging with us as we, it's just a lot of catch up. You know, I, I, you know, I, I like to process what we've been through. So th this episode has felt like a, a scrapbook. We just had a scrapbooking session. We journaled. We journaled no, I verbally. Scrap, I scrapbooked. Yeah. I didn't. Same thing, we made memories. We cataloged memories in a way that, uh, I would like to, you would like to scrapbook about, I would yeah. like to journal about, but yeah. we didn't. And now that we have a record, uh, a time capsule, if you will, of our experience in New York and at the amusement park and at Everything the doctor's else. office. We've recorded history, that's what we've done. And with a few tweaks, and if we tell the story a few more times, we will have played handball with Jimmy Fallon. That's the beauty of recording it now because every time you reaccess a memory, you change it. Yeah. But if we, but then we've, we've got a. Oh, a so record. now we can't do it actually. Right. We actually made it worse. So we, we could have played handball with Jimmy Fallon if we wouldn't have done this. So. We, lo we locked it in. Ugh. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go so out on a limb and say that we'll be back again next week. There's a small chance that I'm going to not be able to speak and, you're gonna be talking and I'll be making motions next week. I don't know, maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. Let's find out. We'll leave our options open. Yeah. Tune back in to find out. I'll talk at you next week, I can guarantee that. <laughs> Love you.